Hey, what's up? Today we're going to make a variable voltage DC power supply. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. It has a 1.3 volt to 23.1 volt range, and the option to switch it to a 12 volt range mode to adjust with higher precision. Sort of. For this project, we'll be using the LM317 linear voltage regulator. It takes in a constant DC input and outputs a variable voltage. Keep in mind, the LM317 is a linear voltage regulator as opposed to a switching bolt regulator. This means it's going to be less efficient, but the advantage is the circuit's going to be more simple. If you want to prioritize efficiency, you probably want to use something like a buck converter instead of the LM317. You'll notice there's a constant voltage of 1.25 volts going across from the adjustment to the output pin, and we'll take advantage of this in constructing our circuit. First, we'll create a ground for our circuit and hold the voltages with capacitors. Then, if we had two resistors like this, we create a voltage divider. And since this is a voltage divider, we know that the voltage across each resistor is proportional to the resistance value. But since the voltage across R1 is defined to be 1.25 volts, we're going to control the output voltage with R2. Now if you make R2 a potentiometer, then we have a variable output voltage. We can then add an indicator LED so that we know when the circuit is powered. Lastly, I'm going to add a switch so that we can change our voltage output range from 24 volts to 12 volts for higher precision. I'm also going to be using this digital voltage monitor. It's really easy to use, it's got three inputs. One is ground, one is power, which can be anywhere from 3 to 30 volts, we'll use our 24, and this is the probe. So here I've set up the circuit on the breadboard for just the 24 volt range. And if I adjust the potentiometer, we go from 1.3 volts all the way up to almost 23. Now I can't go all the way up to 24 volts with a 24 volt input because the LM317 has some overhead voltage. Now I'm going to check to make sure that the voltage stays constant even when a load is applied. Here we have 10.1 volts without a load. and still 10.1 with one. When I take the load out again, no change. I tried this test earlier with a 33 ohm resistor. It was too small. Here I want to test the switch between the 12 volt range and the 24 volt range. Right now we're in the 24 volt range, and we'll confirm the accuracy of our monitor on the multimeter. And when I flip the switch, it drops to a maximum output of 12.2. And here we can adjust with more precision. After soldering the circuit together, we can do some testing. Hopefully it'll perform exactly the same way as it did on the breadboard. In the 24 volt range, we have the full range from 1.3 to 23 volts. And when we switch to the 12 volt range, the maximum is about 12. When we check the actual voltage on the multimeter, we see that the monitor is a little bit inaccurate. But luckily, we can just calibrate the monitor with a screwdriver. And here we can see that the monitor is accurate at least to one decimal place. But now when we go down to a smaller voltage, we lose some accuracy. Now if we calibrate for accuracy on the smaller voltage, when we increase it, we lose accuracy. There seems to be a trade-off inherent to this monitor, but I'm going to opt to have higher precision on the lower voltages. The circuit needs to be housed somewhere, and I found that this box should do the trick. I drew with pencil where I'm going to cut out holes for the components, and then put all of the components in place on the face. So in the 12 volt range, or in the 24 volt range, you'll see that the voltage stays constant even when I attach a load. So here we have a 220 ohm resistor, and you'll see that there's almost no drop in the voltage. However in the 12 volt mode, when I attach the load, the voltage drops. The LM317 requires a minimum of 10 milliamps running through it to function properly. So my best guess as to why we're seeing this voltage drop is that our resistance between our output pin and our adjust pin is too high. Since a voltage drop from the adjust pin to the output pin is 1.25 volts, and we have a 1 kilo ohm resistor going across, that means we have a current of 1.25 milliamps, which is below the minimum. 
And if we wanted to replace the 1 kilo ohm resistor with something more appropriate like 100 ohms or 125, we'd have to get a new potentiometer as well to keep the ratio. Then we'd have a different knob for the 12 volt range than 24 volt range, and I don't want to mess with that. So it looks like we're staying in the 24 volt range. To test this theory, I've shorted the 1 kilo ohm resistor with the 220 ohm resistor, which should have a net resistance of 180 ohms. That's within our range. When I switch it to the 12 volt range, you can see that it's no longer a maximum output of 12 volts. That's because we changed the resistance value. And now when we attach or detach the load, there's no change in voltage. As a last step, I'm going to beautify this with a bit of tape. Now that that's all cleaned up, all that's left to do is pop in the power button, add a knob to the potentiometer, and our power supply is complete. I'll attach 24 volts to the input, and when we switch it on, you can see we have a functional variable voltage power supply. Let's test it out on this lamp. The lamp is rated for 6.3 volts, and I'm setting it up for 5. As you can see, there is minimal voltage drop, and as we increase the voltage across the lamp, it gets brighter. Like I said, it's only rated for 6.3 volts, so this is probably a bad idea. Scratch that, let's actually try to break it. Nice! And there you have it, that's the build for this variable voltage DC power supply.